what are the security controls defense in depth and some of the some of the baseline policies that we 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 really need to have um, as an organization right so we'll be touching on that and if time permits we will also look at some parts of 27001 iso 27001 i've also uploaded the latest version uh, latest version copy of iso 27001 on the link um, so you you should have it with you already just trying to access it and if you don't if you're not able to just let me know and i'll re-upload it but i have already done that i've also i've also uploaded the uh the responsibility and accountability matrix that we discussed yesterday so i've uh, i've also uploaded that just just fyi that that should not be taken uh that should not be followed as is you could uh, you could use that as a as a starting point, and then you can amend as per your need, as uh, as per the roles that you have within your organization or whatever you are trying to implement in that sense. So that's pretty much it, and we will be trying to cover we'll be trying to cover some parts of ISO twenty seven thousand one today. Um, if time permits, we'll go through some of the clauses that we have and annex a controls and we'll be discussing in much more detail in the next session along with the uh, along with the risk assessment as well so security controls so security controls are nothing but the countermeasures or safeguards used to reduce the chances that a threat will exploit a, uh, exploit a vulnerability so we did discuss on the threat and what what are the key uh, definition of a, a threat and a vulnerability can someone can someone refresh that and also what is a risk because these these concepts needs to be really clear in our mind whenever we are going ahead with any any sort of stuff assessment security assessment what is a threat what is a vulnerability and what is a risk and this will also be used in our risk assessment process too so if someone can refresh um this was discussed in the first session itself so yeah what's a threat what's a vulnerability and what's a risk so a security control will largely help you to mitigate this risk right it will help you reduce the risk and this is something it's also pretty much related it's a direct relation to our risk assessment too right so it's really important for someone who is working in the grc field in the longer run right as a CISO as well you would be talking a lot on the threat on the vulnerabilities and on the risk with the larger audience right with the senior leader executives and with the board of directors too so it'd be you'd be as a GRC professional, you'd be speaking a lot in these lines, on these lines. So it's really important for us to have that clarity in mind as to what's a threat, what's a vulnerability, and what's a risk, um, and risk mitigation, uh, risk mitigation techniques that we'll be discussing in the next session. So security controls would largely help you to reduce the likelihood, uh, reduce or mitigate the likelihood of a threat vector or a threat actor to exploit the vulnerability for any um um in, in any before any mishap right so when i say it reduces the likelihood or mitigates the likelihood it means just remember this we we can never we can never ever reduce the risk by 100 percent it can it can never happen that right there will always be a risk even though you implement techniques like edr or you know next gen firewalls next gen firewalls and, and and whatnot right you still are susceptible to hack and you still can get hacked anything it's anything connected can be hacked right so you have to keep that up keep, keep that in mind um, as a grc professional that every time we are always under the radar of a risk and it's it's gonna happen anytime soon right and that's the mentality that we carry when whenever we are trying to reduce the likelihood likelihood of the um of the risk right so security controls are the set of not only technical controls it's also a set of non-tech controls too it's the combination of both rather i would say it's a combination of both that will lead you for your objective to reduce the likelihood of the risk right so say for instance from a non-tech from a non-tech perspective you're conducting a company-wide security awareness training and i'm sure that we we are we are always under the radar of that right we always get security trainings emails to be completed on a periodic basis could be monthly could be quarterly for me it's quarterly right so it could be anything depending on the company's policy so even that's a security control that we are being trained we are being aware to minimize the risk of 
any sort of attack so it's just a, not just social engineering attack it could be anything so any any threat actor or any threat vector which is really exploiting something um across the across the market that needs to be made aware to our employees to make sure that we are reducing that risk from a people process perspective as well right so training is one of the security controls the other technical security control would be you know implementing etr technologies to detect and prevent and respond for any anomaly behavior right so in the past we used to have antivirus antivirus uh which usually base, works on signature based signature based uh, uh detection right so nowadays we have a combination of both av and edr technologies to detect any anomaly behavior um within the network so this is from a this is from a technical standpoint right to have your um to up your game in terms of endpoint security and network security and whatnot right so the overall purpose of implementing any sort of security control be it a technical one or be it a non-tech one it's help to is to help reduce the risk in an organization right so again i'll be very much emphasizing on reduce because it can never be eliminated so never use the word eliminate we are eliminating the risk or we are we have uh, you know um, we are probably reducing the risk to a hundred one hundred percent it can never happen so we we always use that we are reducing the risk and we are we are breaking back to an acceptable level that's something that we'll discuss in much more detail um, in the risk assessment session so always use reduce or mitigation not a 100 percent reduction in the risk so when we say the security controls, there are largely three types of security controls. We have got the physical control, we have got the technical controls, and we have got the administrative controls. And the controls function, which works in conjunction with the secure types of security control, are preventive, detective, corrective. We have got data rent as well. We have got data rent as well. We'll be discussing on that. So administrative controls are largely the type of controls which helps you guide towards something right so the policies and the procedures would guide towards you something it's also your guidelines frameworks as well it, whatever you are adopting to it doesn't matter what framework or standard have you adopted for it doesn't matter but everything something on that those lines would fall and would fall largely under your administrative controls can someone say what what's a preventive control a detective control corrective and deterrent corrective measure vulnerability management would largely be your detective because that's an ongoing process right but then if something is all some things that's already happened it will go through your post implementation review i'm why i am am i exactly focusing on these uh these sort of controls because these are real life things and whenever we are drafting the security controls and that's something that i would also um share an excel sheet with you on that um and we'll discuss through that in today's session as well in a real world scenario whenever we are drafting security controls for the firm or for the company or whenever you are working with a client right we need to be very clear on what are these controls what are the controls that we have drafted what are the what type does it fall into and what is the control function because it's really important to have that clarity because whenever we go for the effectiveness of controls testing that means um, as we discussed design effectiveness and operating effectiveness these sort of segregation would help you to plan your critical controls plan your critical controls it's really important it's really important for us to have that clarity sorry vamsi you're saying something 